Well, you found me. This is the Vintage Woodshop. I'm Sandy, and as I like to say, welcome to my playpen. There. Got all the tools all sharpened up, including the three easy wood carbide tip tools. Kind of a daily ritual. The piece of wood I've mounted up is a piece of Claro walnut that's about 14 inches square, three and a quarter inches thick, to which I have already mounted a, a, a piece of liptus to act as a tenon so that I don't have to carve any of that beautiful wood away. The piece of liptus is uh, integral to my design and uh, won't completely disappear in the final process. Took it off of the vacuum chuck, taking it over to the bandsaw, and uh, I'm going to knock the ears off that thing, save, save that beautiful wood for part of another project someday. Here I'm swapping out the vacuum chuck for my big one-way stronghold chuck. Um, the stronghold chucks I've purchased have just been bulletproof for years and years and years. Spin this thing, make it round, get it all balanced, get it speeded up. In the next few minutes I'll be going through the process of setting up the one-way coring system so that I can core out the center of this blank. I've just added the extension to the headstock for the live center which allows the use of the live center while you're actually doing the coring. All of the fiddling I'm doing here is to determine the depth to which that knife is going to cut. And then when I'm doing the lateral adjustments, that's determining the diameter of what the actual core will be. Decision made. Start cutting and yeah, back it up just a little bit. And then I bring that tailstock up and push that extension so that my live center is hanging on to that part that is eventually going to come out. Those are some really nice shavings I see coming out of there. That tip is nice and sharp and cutting extremely well. Once the knife has reached that depth, then I, then I replace the knife support so that that knife is really nice and stiff and no chatter. Bingo, out comes my core. Time to clean up the flaws, break out the Dremel tool, and uh, get the yuckies out of those cracks and divots. I'm going to be using a combination of CA and uh, five minute epoxy.
I'll put this aside to dry, dismount the big stronghold, and put on my homemade vacuum chuck so that I can remount the cord piece to begin working on it. It will become the pedestal for this project. Now that the five minute epoxy has hardened up, in other words, it's the following day, I can pull off the masking tape and begin cleaning up uh, the flaws that are in the bowl. Yes, and the cleanup is done with the good old-fashioned CA glue and sawdust method, which works extremely well. And now begins the project of sanding. I sand from 80 grit through 400 using two different firmnesses of sanding pads on my drill motors. Notice I'm not wearing any rubber gloves in this little portion of the video, which ended up giving me a real good dose of black thumb for about five or six days. That stuff does take its own sweet time and wearing off.
The disc I'm sanding with is 180 and I had a firm sanding pad. I've got the softer sanding pad now that I use on the 220 and up. It has a real nice polishing effect on the project. Using this 400, no, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. The lathe is running backwards and I do that with every other grit just to do a proper job of sanding. Time to give it a final wash down with some denatured alcohol to get rid of any leftover abrasives and then give it a little final massage with a scotch pad in preparation for putting on the abrasive paste. And putting on the abrasive paste is the best part of any project because that abrasive paste as you can see from the video reveals what Wikipedia defines as a subtle but gorgeous marbled color palette that's highly sought after. Combination with the abrasive paste and the polish that is the only finish that's going to be on this bowl. I slowed this section of the video way, way down so that as I rotate the bowl, you can watch the chatoyance. The chatoyance is the color shifting that's occurring there. And it has, it has to do with the prismatic action of the surface of the wood. And needless to say, video does not do it justice. While I'm looking at this bowl, in actual fact, I'm seeing far, far more of the chatoyance than I'm able to relay to you through a camera. The bulk of the work is now finished on uh, the bowl, so it's time to mount up the cord piece and begin working on what will be the pedestal.
Paste and polish all applied. It's time to uh, dismount this thing. Of course, we've got to check out some of that chatoyance again. Watch that color shifting going on there. I need now to remount the vacuum chuck and I've left the bowl in the stronghold chuck and use the live center to make sure it was centered up. I need to turn that piece of liptus down and shape it, get it finished off so that now instead of just serving as a tenon, it will serve as part of the pedestal for the bowl. While I take a moment to step over to the grinder to touch up the edge on that negative rake scraper, why don't you take the opportunity to subscribe? If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, share it with a friend. It is deeply appreciated. Sorry about the uh, close-up of the back of my head. I will have to choose my camera angles a little better. I have finished with the vacuum chuck for the time being and remounting uh, what will be the bottom part of the pedestal to fit it to the liptus piece on the bottom of the bowl. To do so, I need to not only size it, but I need to uh, cut a mortise into this thing eventually so that I can reverse it to turn out the bottom. Finally, got it. Nice and tight. Perfect. Mm. 
Now for more sanding, the yellow disc is the hard one. And a little hand sanding in between. Here comes the soft back one to do the final on it until, of course, it's time for the paste and the polish. As you can see, my vacuum chuck created a minor problem in leaving the mark on the bottom of the bowl. So I'm rechucking the bowl in the stronghold, putting the vacuum chuck back on so that I can now bore a mortise into the base of the bowl, into that piece of liptus, so I can reverse chuck it and go ahead and use the abrasive paste to get rid of the mark that the vacuum chuck left. Welcome to the only part of this video that was shot with a functional microphone. Here's how she turned out. I love working with Claro. There's nothing on this but the polish I get from Axe. I'll put some stills at the end of the video. Until next time. Get out to the shop, strap on your tool belt, dive into that piece of wood and find the beauty that Mother Nature left there for you.